Right, so today uh, we're going to have a look at uh, removing the top cover from this Zorki 3. This is a quite an early Zorki 3. Uh, it is from 1955. And uh, as you can see, it's got the slow speed dial on the front. And these can gum up, get a little bit dirty. Uh, there are two uh, things that can go wrong. The slow speed dial, uh, the slow speed mechanism, rather, is in the bottom of the camera here. Um, and there's also some bits and gubbins and works up at the top here. So first of all, uh, I'm going to clean up and put a tiny drop of oil, tiny bit of lubrication onto the uh, mechanism around the speed selector dial that's hidden under this cover. So, first thing we're going to do is take off this top cover. And so what we do is we take our screwdrivers and there are a number of screws to undo. There's one here, uh, more or less in the middle, in the centre of the camera. Um, don't touch this one by the viewfinder window, that is not necessary to come off. So we remove this one in the middle here and then on the back we remove these two screws here, those two. And we also have to take off the speed selector dial here, uh, which has two very small set screws to hold it on. And then the whole thing just lifts off. So let's loosen off those screws. It's a good idea to get some good quality screwdrivers for this. There are a lot of cheap, small screwdriver sets around, um, but they are not of the greatest quality. You'll find that the steel that they're made of is quite soft, and uh, you won't use them very long before the heads will suffer damage. That's the first one out. Make sure you've got a tray or something to contain the screws on. I'm putting them in here into the uh, uh, screwdriver case. There's a little uh, thing that will retain them there. So I've got that one out. So what I'm going to do next is take off the speed selector dial. So in order to do that, I'm going to cut the shutter. And we've got a little screw there and a little screw there. So we have two of those, so we'll take the little tiny screwdriver and we will undo those two set screws. Now, one tip for undoing these set screws, don't take them all the way out, just loosen them off. If you take them all the way out, they're very, very hard to get back in. All you really need to do is loosen them off. Just give them a turn or so, and off comes the selector dial. So that was set to one hundredth. So I know uh, when it goes back, I know that uh, it needs to go with the one hundred next to the marker. Then we turn the camera around and we take the screws off the rear of the top cover. Two. 
So our top cover should now be ready to come off. You don't need to undo any other screws, not these ones, no other screws. And we should just be able to take off that cover, lift it off. Just ease it off gently so you're not going to force anything. Because of course these are delicate mechanisms. So one thing that's stopping this from coming off is this collar around the shutter button here, which just protrudes slightly over and stops it coming up. So we're going to lift it off this side first. And that should give us enough clearance. There we go. Off it comes. There we are. Pop that over here. And here we can see the mechanism. Um, and what can happen is sometimes these levers get a little bit gummed up. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to put this back on, this shutter bell back on, uh, so I can change it to one of the slower speeds. So we'll just tighten those screws back up. don't need to do them tight. In fact, when you're tightening up these little set screws, be aware that all of the components on these Zorpies, or many of the components, are made of aluminium, which is not a strong metal. So you must never over tighten the screws because you'll find, if you do, you'll just strip the threads and then you'll have a proper mess on your hands. Alright, so, let's just check that is on 100. Okay, so that's the thousandth. I'll we'll turn it to the slow speed setting. And there we go. So, what we need to know is that this mechanism is rotating properly, which it does seem to be. Everything seems to be working there. Uh, in fact, if I take that off again, if I can take it off again, find where the screws have gone. All right, let's turn it to a point where we've got both the screws exposed. fired again so clearly there's something in this I don't think there's too much worn on this camera because it's in such good condition so I don't think any of the parts are worn so we'll just turn it part way so that we can undo those screws again I'm being very careful not to uh, not to undo them too far because we don't want to lose them, we don't want them to fall out or even worse, fall into the mechanism uh, and then we really are in trouble. Not quite far enough. Yeah. 
So I know that that's set to the slow speed setting now, so... Cut the shutter again. Now it seems to be working quite nicely. Uh, it's very clean in there. Everything looks nice and clean and in good condition. So that's a good sign. I don't think this particular camera has had much use. Uh, so what I intend to do is clean it with a solvent which is uh, this lighter fluid. Um, we have to be very careful how much we put on there so I'm not going to flood it. Uh, this fluid will uh, dissolve any old oil, any old lubricants, any old grease that's in there um, and it will clean things up nicely. So let's open it up. So I'm not going to pour it directly onto the works. What I'm going to do is I've got the, just the top of a little paint tin here. So I'm just going to pour a splodge of it in there. And uh, then I've got a little artist brush, a little paint brush. So we'll, we'll dip that in there. Uh, and I'm going to hold the camera downwards so that None of it runs into the mechanism, into the works. Just clean it up. And maybe, if we're lucky, this might do what we want it to do. Though, uh, though honestly, I, I rather doubt it, but who knows, we might be lucky. So we'll just splodge plenty of it on there. There is a bit of a pong from this uh, lighter fluid because it does evaporate. It's a, it's a petrol really, it's a sort of a low grade petrol. So uh, it's best used in a, a well ventilated area. Let's get a bit more in. Okay, first of all, I'm going to take a little bit of tissue, clean off any dust because we don't want that washing down into the interior. That's going to make a tricky situation even worse. to hold it in this direction because uh, we really don't want any of this stuff going where it shouldn't go. All right. Well, it seems to be firing. So the real test will now be when we set the when we set the speeds. Uh, we set the uh, speed to uh, the other slow shutter speeds. Ah, now that one is stuck in one fifth. So that does suggest that the problem is not in the top part here but it's lower down it's decided it's seems to have decided it's going to work now though as you might be able to hear it's not always running on one fifth that sounds more like half a second to me. Let's try one tenth. It's 
So let's try a half. Mm, that seems to be working. Oh, again, the speed is a bit variable. Yeah, it's all over the place. Variable is uh, variable is being uh, somewhat kind to it. So it does look like the problem is further down within the slow speed mechanism. That's one tenth. That too is all over the place. Here's one second. I think that's one second. Yes. Ah, and the one second has decided it's not going to work. Yeah, so it does look like, well, it does look like on this. On this camera, I'm going to have to undo the uh, the body and have a look at the slow speed mechanism and clean that. So we just put a bit more on, just in case. Just in case we're uh, we're not quite. I haven't quite got all the old lubricant off. It does look very clean in there. One second is uh, the second curtain is not returning. We'll try the D setting. Okay, the D setting is not returning until we come back to the uh, to this speed here to one tenth. So there's the one tenth. Have we made any progress whatsoever? Well, frankly, I rather doubt it. One tenth is variable and it's running too slow anyway. It does look like it's the lower part of the slow speed mechanism that needs a look, as I suspected. Not surprising really for a camera that's, what, how old? 60 years old? This particular camera I don't think has seen much use. It's in very good condition. And uh, it may not have seen any service over the years. Oh, it runs better standing up. There's a little lever here that moves up and down on the 
on the Zorki 3 and that, that lever is in fact moving up and down. So it does seem to be doing its job. Sometimes that can get stuck, but this one does seem to be doing uh, what it's supposed to do. That was about one tenth there, so every few firings you get the right speed, but most of the time you don't get the right speed. Okay, now that's that's still out. It's still not doing what it should do. Let's try half a second. Okay, half a second is decided it's going to be more like three seconds. Yeah, so the second curtain's stuck. All right. Try one fifth again. Fifth doesn't want to play. Hmm. Eventually, it comes around. So, there's clearly some uh, work needed to the lower part of the mechanism. All right. One thing I will do before I put the top back on is uh, just put a tiniest bit of oil on the moving parts. Make sure we've got. Make sure we've got the. Uh, lighter fluid out of the way but it's all removed before we put on some oil so let's take a drop of oil, the very thin oil that I'm using really it should be watch oil um, and the way to oil these is uh, just take a something very uh, small like a, a, a small screwdriver, dip it in the oil, just dip it in the oil like that. And just get a tiny bit on the end there, that's all you need. And we'll put a tiny drop on this pivot. And we'll put a Tiny drop down here. I'm going to put another little drop. which has a pivot going through the body. So we'll just oil that to make sure it's nice and free. Again, only the very, very smallest amounts are needed. I may even be putting a bit too much on here. But all mechanisms need lubrication. And so I'd rather run it with a, an oil that might be a slightly, slightly too thick than have no lubrication at all. That wouldn't do anything any good. I will also try and get a drop 
on the shaft bearing, which is just visible through here. But it really is the smallest amount that you'll need. Very, very little at all. Okay, let's get another drop on the surface. There's a little cam there. Let's get a little drop on that. Has that freed anything up? Well, perhaps it even has done some good. No, it hasn't. Okay. Well, I think at least a at least a six out of ten for effort there, even though we haven't actually achieved what we wanted to achieve. Although in a way we have because I now know that the fault is not with the top part of the camera. And it's good to, always good to uh, clean and oil a mechanism. Just the same as you put engine in a, sorry, just the same as you put oil in an engine, you also need to oil or really any mechanism, any sort of bearing faces, any, any part where there are cams or gears or bearings, a tiniest drop of oil is all you need to keep it in good trim. Good. No, we really haven't. But there we are. So, stage two. Stage two will be to remove the body of the camera uh, and uh, have a look at what's going on underneath. <laughs>